Mom. What? There's a there's a man in a cloak in the backyard. Well, go face him. I'm working. Go face him. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I'll go face him. I'll face him. Hey, bud. You ever heard of trespassing? Why, yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, I have. Look, just... Who... Who are you? <laughs> nice try. Good one. Good question. I'm gonna go back to watching the trees now. Look, can you just... Can you just get out of here? I'm right in the middle of self-isolating. I can't go out anywhere, because, uh, nobody's wearing their masks. It's crazy to me that nobody gives a fuck about each other. It takes five seconds not to be a piece of shit. Perhaps you, Devin, should get off your high horse. For you are not perfect. Oh, perhaps I... You know what? You... <laughs> yeah, alright. Now you're starting to piss me off, okay? You really should go. Because I happen to like it on my high horse. It's very comfortable up here. Uh, plus, I wear my mask. I'm actually very considerate. Uh, as well as humble. So... You know, they're two of my greatest qualities. Just ask my mom. Do you feel that? Do you feel that? That sort of funny feeling, right? Uh, no. Not, not really, no. I'm talking about a sort of shift. A sort of shift in feeling, right? The world's changing, baby. Okay, well, one, don't call me baby. And two, what are you, what are you talking about? You talking about, like, tectonic plates? Because don't fuck with me here, all right? I'm afraid of earthquakes. And, and tornadoes. And, and intimacy. You know, I've been dumped twice in the past year. It's been very painful for me. Right, shut, just, just, just shut up, all right? That's, that's not, that's not even what this is about. I'm sorry. Just, I haven't had a lot of people to talk to. So. Just quit, just quit fucking whining. For your journey is just beginning. Oh, okay. Uh, will said journey be done by nine? Because there's a new Ghost Adventures on tonight. And, uh, I always watch. Take this. Inhale. Find a quiet place. And clear your mind. There's a... There's a... There's a blue rock wrapped in a leaf. Yes, and only through its blueness will you be able to learn my lessons. Can you tell me why there's so many Chipotles built directly next to Starbucks? You know, I'm just too lazy to look it up on the... What the... What the... All right, all right, okay. <sighs> this shit isn't working. What the fuck? Jack Shepard. Pizza a big fucking ruse or something? Cause that's gonna piss me off. What the fuck? Comic Sans, what the- oh my god. Dear Devin, get comfortable, your first guest will be here soon. P.S. Trim your beard, it's gross, sign the sorcerer. Oh, the fucking- oh, it pisses me off. Well, I guess I'm trapped here. I just hope this doesn't become a podcast. In the still of the night When the spells are all cast It's time for the 
sorcerer to kick back and relax. The sorcerer's slumber. Here's a podcast in his head. No, I don't know why. He's magic. Just roll with it. We're live. We're live. We are live. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. So, so I guess, uh, well, the first thing I want to say is, uh, because for the people watching, uh, we're recording this on the day that the, that the beast dropped. So I do want to mention, I do want to mention, thanks George for being a part of the beast. Um, and, uh, it's been a pleasure. That's, that's a funny coincidence. Cause I was going to say first and foremost, let's give a, a congratulations to Devin Cardellino for, writing producing directing and uh, acting in his own feature film oh uh, well, well yes well thank, thank you, you. i couldn't have done it though without without people like you and uh and shane and clay and, well, of, and of, of course you couldn't of course right and spencer you know spencer. but thank you for uh lending me the opportunity absolutely i i couldn't i couldn't uh you know i i, I was like this is having george here in this part this is the right move this is the right yes. uh, the right move uh, i agree with you there were times when things got hectic, um, not I mean just in general with the whole process yeah. of filming, uh, but uh, but I'm glad that it all worked out. I'm glad that we we got the movie out. And, so. and the results are here. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, we, and anybody who's watching this can go and check it out, right? Yeah, most absolutely. Yeah, this will be on my my YouTube channel, so uh, so they can go check out. So if you're watching this and you haven't watched that, you should definitely check it out. Go you give that some three. love. If you haven't seen any of the Beast movies, you should definitely watch all three. Um, the Beast, The Beast Sweater Weather, Remember the Beast. All the, the trilogy. The trilogy. Uh, a trilogy to, to match, I think, even some of the most popular trilogies out there. Like, like the Better original. than Lord of the Rings. I, 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 I think it's, it's possible. I think, that, uh, I think we might have made a better trilogy than The Hobbit. I, think, I don't know if we beat yeah. Lord of the Rings, but I, Hobbit was a little shaky. So I think we... The Hobbit, I think, yeah. What's that dude's name? He, uh, Bilbo. No, oh, the actor. Oh, uh, Martin Freeman. Yeah, I mean he's he's hard to beat, but I think he did it. Yeah, he's a good he's a good a char- he's a good character. I thought I thought the last um I thought the last Hobbit movie though was not good. I didn't like uh. Was the that five. the Desolation? No, I liked Smog. Desolation. Of, I liked Desolation of Smog. I didn't like uh the Battle of the Five Armies or whatever it was. I I, I thought that movie. I don't know. I thought I thought The Hobbit could have been one really good long movie, but like a nine hour movie. Maybe maybe not nine hours. Maybe eight hours. But uh, I don't know. I thought it could have. I thought it could have been just one thing. But I think they stretched it out too long, having all have, making it into three movies. Yeah, like too too much. Was Desolation of Smog not the uh, not the last one? No, Desolation of Smog was the second one. Oh. Um, which I I really like that movie. I don't know why that one I like that one so much, but it was good. I enjoyed it too. I Very liked, cool special effects. Yeah, and I loved uh, I, I loved um, Smaug. I thought it was really like it was actually pretty scary, uh, and like the the way that I, yeah. I that, that ending of him flying towards the city, and he says like I am I am fire, I am death, and I was like. Uh-huh. Oh, that's right, cool. right. Yeah. Now I remember because uh, spoiler alert. Oh yeah, that sorry. End with what? Well, I'm about to spoil the last movie, so spoiler alert if you haven't seen that. Right. Sorry, but uh, yeah. I now I recall what the second one ends with him doing that, and then the third one begins with them shooting him. Yeah. With a scale. Yeah, and they kill him at like the very beginning of, of yeah, the exactly. movie. That's, so that's, and I was like, that was such a cool villain that they got. I mean, I, I've never right. read the, the Hobbit book, so I don't, I don't really know Neither what. Maybe, maybe that happens in the book, but I, I, I don't know. I thought that I've was never a read movie. a book. Yeah, I don't even know how to read. So. Uh, but I, yeah, I thought that was a waste of a villain, uh, in my opinion. I don't know. It's just just my thoughts on it, but uh, but yeah. So he yeah, was no, nice while he think. lasted. What what's that? I said he was nice while he lasted. Exactly, yeah. Oh, I liked your video for the um, uh, like, like that all all the the senior the, class, the seniors. Yeah, yeah, that was a really fun video. That I I really liked. Thank that. you, thank yeah. you. Uh, I owe it all to them though. Oh yeah, they did. Everyone was great. 
uh, I really liked, I really, it was cool to, I don't even know any of those people, but I was like, ah, that guy's funny. You're like, oh. Right. You know? And, and that's what I love about it is because I, I uh, specifically said, you know, don't be boring in this exactly. okay i told everybody i was like i want to want a video this criteria but you know just make it a little bit funny you know right that's i i gotta i gotta thank you again for you know you, you're always very supportive of what i'm working on oh, and that of course. that definitely means a lot you know because i think in, in a and you, and you want to go into a well what, what are your what is what is your your ultimate your ultimate goal i mean what, what do you what do you really want to do do you do you know yeah well um i i'd like to be an actor I'd like to be in the movies I in some you. regard. You know, uh, uh, I like to think of like a James Franco or any any of them. You know, he's he is in TV shows and movies, but then he also writes, started writing and directing his own yeah. movies. You and know, he's a good. Uh, he's a good. Uh, he's a good writer. Oh, yeah. too. I have you I, seen? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Didn't mean to interrupt. No, I was just gonna say like a, a lot of a lot of the big guys. I mean, I don't know whether I. I feel like more so the people who start with acting then go on to write rather than they yeah. start writing and then they go on to act or, or directing and then go on to acting like you don't see steven spielberg yeah acting and all these things but just <laughs> like john yeah. krasinski you know with uh his quiet movie right uh, a quiet location quiet quiet location <laughs> but uh but i think i think that would be and and if that happened uh in my future then i'd be totally content yeah i um, think if anyone could pull that off it's definitely it's definitely you george for sure thank you thank you yeah I, I will i will share with you one thing on my bucket list oh yeah and it is to it, it and maybe maybe this will offer you some insights as an answer to your question uh it, it's on my bucket list to direct you know write slash direct a movie that evokes a tear Ooh. So I want to make oh, yeah. a movie that makes people cry. Oh yeah, definitely. And and not because I want to see people cry, not because you know, yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to see the world crying, but uh, <laughs> I want to make a movie that is, uh, you know, packs emotion and makes people emotional. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? I'm just interested to hear your opinion on this. Like, what what is it? Do you do you think that makes a movie have like an emotional punch to it. I think one of the essentials is there must be something that the viewer can can uh, attach to yeah. before anything sad happens. You know, you just show a video of a guy getting shot. You're like, okay, who is this guy? You know, <laughs> uh, uh, for anything, you know, if anything, it could be like a, a prisoner and you'd be happy about it, you know, it could yeah. be a horrible person. But, you know, those movies that... Um, I mean, uh, some of the, the saddest movies are really movies that have a character who is really a good person, mm -hmm. who, who they depict as just really a good person, and something really just tragic happens to them, and they, they try and stay strong, but... but Can't do it. There, there's a... Like, like Manchester by the Sea, I think is a, a decent... Did you see that movie? Is it, no. Oh. I don't know what that it, is. It's pretty, it was pretty decent. I don't love... Uh, I don't like Casey Affleck that much. Um, but that, that, that's a good example of like a, a movie that just, it just keeps hitting you with these, with these punches. Um, and like Casey Affleck's character, he's not necessarily like totally good, but you learn, you learn about him as the movie goes on and uh -huh. you just, you just feel like, you just feel shitty for him. You just feel like, you know, cause he's done some bad things, right? but, but you, you can see him struggling with those things. And it's really like, I think that's really important in in making a movie that's that packs an emotional punch is that like the writing has to be like really on point For sure because uh, i think there's a lot of there's a lot of movies that they're they're such good ideas yeah but they flop in the in the writing in like the writing section of the movie because i i've turned a lot of movies off yeah. very early on just because they're but like oh unwatchable I, I just watched the other day. Um, I watched uh, the the Pet Cemetery remake from like twenty. You did yeah, I watched the. I think it's from twenty eighteen or twenty maybe last year, and it sucks. I hated it. Oh. Um, but it's it's so it was so disappointing because it's such at, at at the at its core, it's such an an interesting idea. This this like concept of 
of if you could, if somebody that you loved died yeah. and you could bury them in a specific spot and bring them back to life, but when they come back, they're not quite normal. It's yeah. like, it raises this question of like, would you, would you do that? And, it, and like, honestly, it, I like the movie in the, the theme that it presents and like the, I, the questions that it presents, I was like, I was thinking about that aspect of it. I was like, that is a really interesting question. But, but the movie, like we were just saying, I mean, it, it fails in the writing portion because the dad is like a, a really smart dude at the beginning of the movie. He's very level headed. He's a doctor. Uh -huh. He's like, and, and at first it was interesting about the first 40 minutes were really good. Yeah. Actually the first 40 minutes were, were fine. I mean, they weren't perfect, but I, I enjoyed the first like 40 minutes or so because the dad keeps or er, keeps saying like, because the cat dies and the dad keeps saying, like, when when you die, you die. That's it. And the uh -huh. daughter is like, are you sure? And he's like, yeah, that's just it. Like, you, when you die, you're dead. And so it's obviously, it's it's leading up to this, like, idea that, like, that's actually are not Are you actually true. dead? Right. That ends up being not, hmm. like, he, he was wrong. Like, you, he could, like, I mean, I, I don't know if you have any intention of, of watching it. I, 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 I mean, I, I it basically... It, Maybe if it shows up on Netflix, I'll. I, honestly, it, I would where say. Where did you watch it? Is it on Netflix? It's Maybe on Amazon Prime uh, for free. Oh. Okay. Um, it's honestly, I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, unless you want to like see an example of bad writing, but I mean, I don't <laughs> know how much you want me to say. I would love to talk about it more, but yeah, I, don't I, I don't mind. Is it? Uh, is it the same plot as the original? Well, I've never seen. I've never seen the like '80s one, um, and I, I've never read the book. So I don't know exactly, I, I know that they changed some things. I know that in the, I think in the book and in the, the 80s movie, well, this is what I was going to, uh, about to say is that in this, in this movie, it's the eight-year-old daughter that gets hit by the truck. Um, okay. In the book and in the 80s movie, it's like the three-year-old that gets hit. Um, Gosh. And so that like the three-year-old is the one that comes back to life and is like, I'm a killer now. But I know that the filmmakers for like this new one thought, that's a little bit like how scary could a three-year-old kid really be? I mean, like, yeah, it, like, and, and if he was dead for like a day, he'd probably be, <laughs> I know he's got like supernatural abilities now, but I mean, how, like, I feel like you could still take a tiny three-year-old kid. <laughs> like if he was like uh, a lot, there's a lot of people that tell me, uh, my mom, even that kids are scarier in horror films than adults you know like oh, children yeah. of the corn uh i know chuck chucky's not a yeah, child's but, play it's not a he's not a kid but still it's like a little still. little thing but any anything with like uh uh a child-based villain i'm trying to think of more off the top of my head yeah i, mean, I can't it, think I, I know there's a million movies that have yeah antagonists but i can't not very memorable uh, yeah i can't well, i can't think of anything I mean, sure, it might be scary, but I don't think it's scarier than a scary movie. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think what, what, I think it was a good decision in this remake to have it be the daughter that's a little older that gets yeah. killed and brought back because, I, I, there, I don't know, that was a little scarier to me. She's, I, I, she did a good job of being creepy. My complaint with the movie was that, in the writing wise, there was no there was definitely not enough interaction between the dad and the daughter to ever warrant him bringing her back from the dead. Cause he like, they, I just, to me, they just didn't interact enough. So when he, when he made that decision to bring her back, I was like, I get what they're doing here, but I just don't, I don't feel it. Like, I don't, I don't feel that this guy would, I haven't seen enough, but be, between these two, to make me feel like, oh yeah, this guy would definitely do that. Yeah. Like that's a huge decision to make. And, I, and big. I, yeah, like, I mean, and he knows that it's risky and I just feel like he's, he's been very level headed the whole movie. And I get, maybe they're trying to say like, well, you know, if your kid dies, you know, that'll, that'll set you over the edge, but there was just no, I think they needed in the writing portion of the movie, they needed to throw some more things in there that maybe establish that this guy is a little bit unstable yeah. and that he's just this close to being set off. I think that would have been- How immediate was it after she died that- Literally, as soon as she dies, 
they have a funeral and the about the last 30 minutes of the movie he brings her back and she's like a monster now and and there was just no it, it just it, it felt like there was a lot left out and 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 i yeah. would it could have been it's one of those movies that that could have been so good if they had really done it right and i think it, like kind of going off of what i was saying before i think that, that that's why the shining works so well because uh-huh. and I, don't, I don't know if you've ever have you seen the shining i have and so i think that the shining works really well because jack nicholson's character is is like kind of off from the very beginning from literally the first scene when he's sitting in the office with that guy and i don't remember what really they say but he's like he's already like yeah i want the yeah I'll, he, I'll he's want creepy the. just he's, jack nicholson right he's already creepy so it, it like the fact that he later becomes insane make, yeah. it, it works you believe it and that's what yeah. my problem was with pet cemetery was i was like i this guy seemed totally fine and then like the daughter dies and then he's like yeah i guess i'm i'm guess i'm gonna bring her back from the dead now like it just didn't make any sense but I, and and i guess i guess where i'm going with that is that there was no we were talking about like having an emotional punch in a movie there there was no emotional punch for me when the daughter died there was no emotional punch because i there weren't enough scenes with her so i didn't right. care and yeah. there, was, there wasn't enough there weren't enough scenes between the dad and the daughter for me to care either so when he brought her back and she was like crazy and it wasn't what he thought it was going to be like i was like eh and and then the movie ended and i went all right <laughs> okay you know i i guess the only excuse that they have to make it uh to make people say that okay i guess it's a good movie is um like scary stories to tell in the dark you oh, yeah. saw that right I, I haven't seen that yet but you but please talk about oh, it oh you I, haven't i haven't seen it but i'd love to hear about it oh, i know you well, and spencer talked about it at one point yeah it was terrible like it was oh. such a bad movie but uh but like writing based the writing was terrible the plot mm-hmm. was just very like surface you know, yeah, it was like a a, a ten year old could have wrote it, you know. It's <laughs> yeah. all, they 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 went here and found a book, and then they went here, and the book started writing in itself. Uh, yeah. So it was very like, yeah, oh, a twelve year old went and sold this to a production company, and they they made it into a movie. But the the only thing that kind of um, saved it from just being terrible was you know the special effects where all these different scary characters. Hmm what they were it was scary scary. in the in the special effects it was it was very very chilling but unless you know but i mean other other from that it was just terrible not good yeah but um that's so so i I recommend watching it you know for the scares yeah if you want to get creeped out or like for halloween because it did have a halloween vibe um but uh unless unless pet cemetery has any of that to redeem it then it it really was not I don't know. was definitely not a scary movie at all like it didn't it did not stick with me but i it's 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 hard i i don't know it's hard to scare me i get scared by weird things like um i it 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 i i don't really i don't typically get scared by like movie monsters all that much uh-huh. um i don't know why i'm holding a marker i just found it on the table but uh i don't really get scared by movie monsters all that much it, it I usually get scared more by like um by like things that are just a little bit eerie or like or like something that's just like I don't know if did you see Hereditary? No. Oh, I, you, I won't. I won't talk. To, you you gotta you've gotta experience. That's on Prime, right? That is on Prime, and you've right. got to watch that tonight. Yeah, you've got to experience that movie. It. I keep picking up this marker again. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to experience that movie because and I won't I won't tell you anything about it other than. It's it's one of the only movies in recent memory that like genuinely it didn't give me nightmares, but it, it was yeah. freaky. Like it freaked me out. I thought it was the scares are so good and the buildup is so good. And there's really there's scene, yeah, there's a scene towards the beginning that oh my I could not believe that they put it in this movie. It is so disturbing. Um, but of course it's the same dude that made Midsummer, so right. that I mean, it's is, the same kind of vibe. Is, is Midsummer the movie that they said that Hereditary was similar to, or is there an is there another A twenty four movie that 
it's, I feel like there's another movie that had a very similar plot to Hereditary that I I'm watched sure. with someone. I'm not sure about that, but I just know I do know. Yeah, I just know that it's but, they're both A24 and they're both directed right. by the same dude. So it's just they are very similar. Yeah, they are. Well, no, yeah, they are just they're very similar movies. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if it, like I it makes me wonder if maybe they they're set in like the same universe. I don't know if that it's possible that that has been discussed. But that was one of the first things that when I finished Hereditary, it has it's so similar that I was like. I wonder if, if if the director of these is trying to do like a I don't think he's trying to do a shared universe where like they would all come together but I just wonder if they're yeah. all taking place in the same universe because if they all they right. feel, they both feel so similar um I think Hereditary is way scarier than Midsummer though I thought Midsummer really? Yeah, I thought Midsummer was good but it I it it was more like it Midsummer for me just more made me like like ugh like yeah, that. exactly. It was shocking at yeah, points. Um, it was shocking, yeah, but it didn't really scare me. There were no. things that, that that like that I thought were like awful to watch. Like yeah. I was like, I can't believe I just sat and watched that. That was horribly disturbing. Um, and that one that'll be sticking with me. But Hereditary is yeah. more, more subtle about the the scares, but it but it all yeah. it all builds up. And this is what a lot of people I think talk about with Hereditary is the ending. It all builds up to this ending that you're like, uh, the the music in the ending is is haunting. It's that song that a lot of people are using in like uh, memes and like TikToks that that. It's really like when you hear it in the context of the movie, though. Yeah. It is horrifying. The last scene, I was like, that that is so scary. The, like, Hereditary will definitely stick with me for sure because that that like. I thought it was way scarier than Midsummer, for sure. So is that is that a psychological? Because all the the you know horror movies like uh, Insidious, Paranormal Activity, stuff like that, The Conjuring. Well, those are all like ghost movies, but like ghost movies and yeah, like you said, monster movies. I mean, I guess they're supposed to be scary, and they have jump scares. Yeah, which which spooks you. Oh yeah. But I mean, in the end, I think I think. Um, the difference is like okay you watch it you get scared in the moment from a jump scare and then after yeah. it's over you're like you're like oh that was all right that was a cool movie you go get you go get food and start talking about something else yeah but the the ones that actually get to me are, are the psychological ones definitely um and and midsummer like i really enjoyed all the parts where they were i felt like they were so daring you know uh, oh yeah like jumping off the spoiler alert yeah, no, jumping off the cliff part- and I remember I didn't know that that was coming and I was just sitting on the yeah. couch and I went, Oh, I went, no, no way. I yeah. said, there's, I went in my head. I was going, there's, there is no way that they are, yeah. that they're going to show this right now. And then they did. <laughs> I was, and I was, it like, was, oh. it was, I mean, it's, it was gross, but I was like, so I mean, well hey, done, awesome. Though. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, oh the, special God, effects yeah. There, the special effects that were so good that I, it, I think, the reason that it disturbed me so much was so much was because I really felt like I was actually watching people die. Yeah. Like, so those special effects look so, I, I don't want to say real cause I've never seen somebody jump off of a cliff, but yeah. I hope that I don't ever have to see somebody jump off a cliff. But yeah, I, I, I just, to me, I, it looked so realistic that it, that's what really got to me about it. That I was like that, that's going to stick in and, my brain. Forever. And the, the plot, since it was a cult and you know, people don't know, people who aren't in a cult who are all the people going to watch this movie don't know that much about cult culture. Yeah. So then they're like, wow, this is, this is happening somewhere in, in the hills of yeah. the ne- Netherlands. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Sweden or, or, or uh, probably Sweden, probably Sweden. I don't know. Maybe not Sweden. But it's one of the S that sounds right. Sweden or Switzerland. But, um, and the part where I th- was the guy who peed, on like with the ashes or something of everybody yeah, the on the log the ceremonial yeah, the tree. tree that they that they i think they dump ashes on them or something yeah there's like something that. special about it yeah it's like um, the guy who peed on the tree was was he the one that they found they found in the barn who like his stomach was ripped open no the, uh that the guy that peed on the tree no they cooked him no they well i don't they, maybe no, they cooked him but know. they the one guy at one point there's the dude that wanted to study the like wanted to like look through their book 
like their special book, he he like goes in and and, oh. and then one of the the cult people like comes up behind him wearing that dude's face that peed on the tree and yeah. kills the guy looking through the book. Yeah, that was scary. And that, he uh, was the one. In, yeah, that that, that was that was yeah. awesome. Yeah, there was a um, lot of great <laughs> moments in Midsummer. It was a great movie. It just didn't. It didn't. A lot of people said it was like really really scary, and it didn't. It didn't necessarily scare me. Yeah, but it would it uh, disturbed me. Yeah, none of none of those parts were scary to me. I thought like, wow, yeah, exactly, disturbing. They were like, it's it's like cringy to look at. You look yeah. and you're like cringe. But th- there 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 was a part, there was a part where I almost stepped out, and a part where I did step out, and that was uh, the part where I almost stepped out was when it showed the sister in the beginning that she had just like killed the parents. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and you just, I was like, that just get, just mentioning that just gave me goosebumps. I man. know, and I was like, and I was that like, was okay, brutal. so I don't, I don't like that. Me neither. That that was brutal. I almost. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're right. Though. I didn't step out, but I almost, I almost stopped watching the movie there. But yeah. then I thought, yeah. and, I mean, it, that's horribly disturbing. But I, mm. but then I thought, man, if that, if that like disturbed me that much, that is like that's a a good. That means it's a good film. Like, right. I mean, that's a good. Which, that is right. It's a weird, like, it's a weird thing to, to have to, like, weigh, because I was like, this is, I, I don't know, it's like, it, I think it raises a good question about, like, what, is, is there anything in film that is, like, that's too much? Like, I don't think I would ever. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think that there, I, I think that anything, I, I think that anything is possible with film. So I think that filmmakers should, should go for it with whatever yeah. ideas they have as long as they're as long as they're like as long as they know what they're doing as long as they like at least understand what they're trying to do yeah like i think that what makes midsummer work is that it's it's really disturbing but the, but it's it there's so much like competence in the filmmaking right like, you know that the filmmakers had a a plan like you know that they understood like okay, yeah. this is what this means? Like we're not right. just, not. They didn't just go. You know, it would be great if we had the the sister kill the parents at the beginning. That would be funny, or that would be like <laughs> people. People will be like, oh, like they. You know, there was like weight to that decision. Especially, right. I, I did read that that initially, the I, I do not know the director's name, the guy that directed Hereditary and Midsummer, but I know that a, a, the initial script. I'll pull it up. For, yeah, the the initial script for Midsummer that they like that they gave to him because he didn't i think he wrote hereditary i could be wrong in that i think he wrote ari aster yes yes ari aster um i believe he wrote hereditary but i don't know if he wrote midsummer um but i know that the original script for midsummer was meant to be just like a just like a straight slasher movie like it it was supposed to be like a yeah i don't think originally that it was supposed to have like the mythological yeah aspects or like the it it definitely at one point i think before they like selected ari or before ari aster agreed to direct yeah i think he did write it too by the way oh he wrote it yeah oh i think he he must have like re rewritten the original script that they gave him or like whatever they gave him initially he changed because it was just like it was going to be just like a friday the 13th type slasher movie like with without much weight to it and i'm glad that it's not i, that. I know i was gonna say yeah i'm, I'm glad they went with what they did because very yeah. very smart movie i mean everything oh, yeah. was very well executed very very well written and they and um, there's so much foreshadowing in it blow. too yeah that, I, I, think I mean yeah. i i love to watch movies again to see to pick up on the foreshadowing i love foreshadowing in movies because yeah. like it's just like even like one word right that somebody will say you'll be like oh but i don't know i don't know if i have the strength to watch that one again oh Can yeah i could watch I will, it once i'll never in my life watch midsummer again and like, yeah, well, that's not, not necessarily i might watch it again at some point but at least for a while i don't i don't need to watch it again maybe, maybe for a lady yeah She's yeah like, hey let's watch if, midsummer uh, i'm like you're like i've never whoa i've never okay. seen okay I've heard it's, I've heard it's, sure. it's, it's just all right, you know. I, I, yeah. I, I, uh, I may have to go to the bathroom twice during it, but. <laughs> There's two specific parts where I might have yeah. to pee, but, you know, no big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, I, can't, I can't imagine going to, like, 
going on a date or something and being like, let's like, let's go see Midsummer and like without yeah. knowing what, what it was about, that would have been right. a bad, if that was like a first date, oh, that would have been a bad first date. I, you'd, you'd go in like this and then, and then I would just come out and like, I'd guarantee there, there wouldn't be a second date. No, probably not. I, unless, I unless they really like, unless the, uh, the female really likes uh, disturbing horror movies, but that might be a sign that I you don't so. want to have a second date. Ex- exactly. <laughs> exactly. I don't know about that. Yeah. Um, I feel like if she was like, I love that part where they jump off the cliff. You're like, okay. <laughs> what? What? Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, any, any, uh, and also with scary movies, it's, it's less, for me, it's less getting, I think getting scared is fun. I say there's a difference between getting scared, like jump scares and stuff. You're like, oh, that was fun. And then getting anxiety from a movie. Yeah. That's what Midsummer did. Cause like the part with the, uh, uh, sister, I was like, oh, that's, like that's making me anxious and then and then the other part where i actually left the room for was when when she did the mushrooms at the beginning and then every everything started oh. warping and then she started like having a panic attack yeah i i was starting to get anxiety cuz she had anxiety and i was like i don't like this yeah so I, that was i stepped I, down for a second i thought that part was so i thought that the way that they filmed that was really effective yeah. um, i mean i've never done I've, obviously i've never like done mushroom so i don't know what i don't i don't know what it feels like yeah. what it looks like but to me that's what i imagine that it looks like um i thought that they did like right a, and from what i've heard from people what people have described to me about doing mushrooms like uh-huh. uh what well well that but then just her just the depiction too of her like feeling so scared yeah they did that in such a way that like i feel like it just made you feel that as well which just, right. just seeing her so afraid made me afraid. And, and that's like, that's what like I that. think Ari Aster, after watching Hereditary, he does a really good job with depicting fear. Like I and I think that's what makes that's kind of what makes his movies scary to me. Is especially yeah. I think you will be really I think you'll be impressed with Hereditary. I think you I, I don't want to like I, I think you might actually like Hereditary more than Midsummer. But okay. at least that's how I feel about it. I liked Hereditary more as a movie than I did Midsummer. But I think it's I, I like the characters more in Hereditary. One of my, one of, I think the one of the weakest parts of Midsummer was that I really only cared about the main girl. I didn't find oh, I hated her. Oh, you didn't like her? I, I didn't I didn't love her. I she's not my favorite movie character of all time, but like I thought that she carried the movie, like without her there would be maybe, absolutely maybe as it went on i i didn't mind but like i just thought she was so annoying you know yeah she was a little... i mean they, they see that that's weird too because at the beginning from the beginning they made her out to be like this annoying girl she kept bugging that guy and like but, but then I thought again i was such a dick i thought that guy yeah, was such because, an asshole because like her her sister and parents just died it's like give yeah her he's a break, like so she's like i don't know yeah, it, annoying. I, I know i mean but, it, i guess it's not I mean, it's hey, not necessarily great. It's not necessarily his responsibility, but like, but still, like, be he just was such a, he wasn't even like respectful about it. He was just like, he was just clearly right. like, he tr- he was like, I don't know, he was just such a jerk from the beginning. And I thought I didn't think any of the characters were that likable. So like, and maybe that was the point because mm-hmm. like they all get killed anyway. But I just, I don't know. I find in movies like that that I like I have to. There has to be something that like attaches me to the character. Right. Or I just, or I lose interest. I didn't lose interest in Midsummer just because it's, it's so interestingly shot yeah. and the scenery is so interesting, but I think Hereditary does the characters a lot better. They're like, there actually is, there's something there with those characters with the mom and the brother and the dad, like you're, I don't know. It's really good. I don't want to say too much about Hereditary because I think when yeah. you, you got to just experience it without knowing anything because i had heard people talk about it but i had kind of blocked out things so i didn't really know that much going into it i just knew that people said the ending was scary so the whole movie i was like what what made this ending so scary that people kept saying was it and, was it only the ending scary no i mean there's there's a lot of of scary things through it's not again again it's not a movie that like i don't think you're gonna have nightmares about it like i, I mean but I think it'll stick with you because it's it's 
it kind of does a similar thing to Midsummer, and that it's it's like it's less disturbing than Midsummer. Uh huh. But there's the the scares are 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 like they are like kind of psychological, like or like the imagery is a little. There's there's one thing in Hereditary that I thought was disturbing that I couldn't believe that they I couldn't believe that they did it. But it's it it it's what carries the whole movie. I mean, it's the most important thing that happens because it sets the rest of the movie in motion yeah it is so well, i'm excited yeah you should definitely check it out because it is uh, you'll i don't know I if i should watch it at at 11 12 at night but I'm going i think that's it. the best time to watch it i think it'll i think it'll well, that's when i watched it and i was like i it, yeah right. i don't think it's like i don't know i don't think it'll scare you that bad but i just i think it's yeah. a, just a good movie so i think it's worth watching because it's a, as far as horror movies go i think there's so many bad horror movies that it's refreshing to see one that's that's actually oh, really yeah. well done. You know, um, somebody somebody just asked me for scary movie recommendations, and I didn't know any off the top of my head. So I I looked on a list of scary movies to see like, okay, which ones have I seen, and I'll tell her which ones are scary, and there's none of them. Oh, really? Yeah. The, the the one that that I couldn't believe everybody liked so much was The Babadook. I never, I never saw it. What, did you watch it? Yeah, and it was just so bad. Really? It was I, such, yeah. Yeah, it was I terrible. never, I never checked it out because I just, I don't know. A lot of times, I, I, I don't know. I feel like when people, a lot of times when people, when a bunch of people are saying a movie is good, it's usually not good. I, I don't know why yeah. I found that to be the case, but like, there's been very few times where everyone has said a movie is really good, and I've watched it and then gone you know what? Yeah, that was really good. I don't yeah. know. I don't think it's just me being difficult. I, I, I if I like a no, movie, I, I, I agree with you. I think ratings are, I mean, they're, oh, they yeah. hardly mean anything. I, I don't ever, I, pay I, I'll watch a, a movie with a 64% and it's great. Rotten Tomatoes and yeah. And I, I like fall in love with it. So yeah, like I watched, um, I watched a movie called the strangers pray at night. Like it's a sequel to the original, the strangers, which the original movie is really good. I mean, it's not, Okay, I don't want to say it's really good. Um, it's a it's a good horror movie. I don't think it holds up now. I think when it came out, and I don't know what year it came out, but I think when it came out, it probably was more impactful, the scares that they were doing, because it was very, like, it, it was a lot of really subtle things, like people being in the shadows, like just being able to see their, their mask in the shadows, like, moving, and the character not knowing that they're there. Yeah, is that, that the one where they're in their house and then they're all like around the house and then spoiler alert they like kill them at the end and they're like why are you doing this and yes like, the door was unlocked yeah because you were home you're you're home you yeah, were home you were the only ones home which i i don't know i think that that's really scary like just my yeah my mom that's one of my uh, my mom's like top scary movies because she's like oh because my mom says like oh that can happen right that's i mean i like i guess very you know, rarely, that is, probably. That is what freaks me out about happen. it. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I guess it's like, it, it probably wouldn't happen. Watch, right. I'm saying this, there's going to be like a face in the, uh, but like, it probably wouldn't happen. It probably wouldn't happen, but it's just the, the thought that it could. Right. It, when it makes your imagination go. And then, and then when they said uh, you were home, my mom thought that was horrible too, because like, that's all the reason they needed. to Exactly. To and that's you and right and that's kind of a, a similar thing happens in the strangers pray at night um it's like it it's 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 cheesy like it's way cheesier than the first one but it got terrible yeah. reviews but i watched it and and i actually liked i actually liked this one the or the sequel better than the first one because i just thought it was a lot more fun like it it's yeah. there's a there's a scene in the sequel where the brother it's like a brother this brother and sister are the last two left and uh this the brother is like about to fight the like i think the stranger group it's like a dad and a mom and a daughter i i, I think huh. and like the big the big dad guy is like he's he oh the brother kills the mom like the 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 villain mom like he kills her um and then like the the dad with the mask is like coming to he's like coming to kill the brother but i love the decision that they made to, it was super 80s looking because they yeah. set it by a pool 
and there's all these like purple and pink neon lights around the pool on like these fake palm trees. Uh-huh. And I really liked the look of it. it. Like if you watch any of the movie, it's cause it's not a great movie. It definitely didn't deserve to get such bad reviews. Right. Um, cause it got like really bad reviews. Um, but yeah, that scene was just like, as far as f- like filmmaking goes, I thought that it was like, it was really like, it was actually like weirdly beautiful the way uh-huh. that they shot it and the lighting choices that they made. I, I loved, I loved it. And I had a lot of fun and there, and the soundtrack was really good too. Cause there would be scenes where they're getting chased down and they're playing like these really upbeat eighties songs. Um, yeah. like, or like at one point the song was playing from the radio of a truck that the dad is driving after like the main girl. Uh-huh. And like you hear the song playing and it was really, it was a lot of fun. And I couldn't believe that's why I don't take rev- like reviews and ratings seriously. Cause I'm like, especially for horror movies. Cause they never get good. Exactly. I don't know why movie critics even go to see like horror movies. I think movie critics are, are I mean, I, I, I think mo- like, like actual professional movie critics are some of the worst people. Like I would never want to, they all just get paid. They get paid to say whatever. Yeah, and, they, good and or- and they're yeah, all so. They, a lot of them are so, just, just boring. And they're like, and they're like, uh, I saw a horror movie, and uh, uh, I didn't get anything out of it. And it's like, well, like, what are you, <laughs> what are you expecting to go? You're, what, are you expecting to learn a life lesson from a horror movie? I think. Yeah, it, a lot I, of people. They're like, way too technical, too. Exactly. I think. I think in like this day and age too, that there's so many movies that we've kind of lost track of like the point, the point of movies is like, is entertainment. Yeah. If you, if you, if you're a critic and you're going to see a movie and you're taking it so, so seriously, it's like, that's, you've defeated the point of movies at that point. Like you're like, yeah, like you're, you're, you're supposed to be like this, like wise movie person, but you're, you've forgotten what the fundamental, like, point of, of watching a movie is you're supposed to have fun <laughs> like like it drives me crazy. I've, I've read a lot of reviews even that start like you know this was a good movie but or this would have been a good movie yeah or, this this was a great movie but the exception is like this and it's just something like oh he this guy was he was a little too prominent in this scene yeah and, and then i think like you know can one scene make or break a movie i mean i I guess if it's at the end and like the you know if they kill yeah one of the the main i don't know but yeah i mean i think it's one thing for a movie to be it's one thing if a movie is genuinely really bad like i can Mm -hmm. like if if there's a movie that like where the writing is like terrible like the worst writing ever like the room Yes, the room. I mean, I, it's a fun. I mean, it's kind of a fun joke. But, movie, not, but like, right now, now it's a cult classic. Yeah. But I mean, I do, I do get a kick out of it. I mean, it's it's funny how bad it is. But it, I mean, that is right. a great. Like it is the it's terrible. The writing's terrible. The cinematography's terrible. I mean, yeah. one, I think there are, there are circumstances where there are movies out there that are. I guess what I'm talking about more with these like critics is that like there are movies out there that are good, but that these critics are taking so like seriously that they're just destroying them yeah like for no reason and it's like I mean, it's like i said it's one thing for a a movie to genuinely be bad and get bad reviews mm-hmm. i've seen movies that are bad and that they should get bad reviews right I, there are a lot of movies out there that are that are perfectly fine and 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 they get just decimated and like i i don't understand it because a lot then a lot of people don't go see them but then I watch it like months later and I'm like, wait a minute, this is, this is good. Why, why did this get such bad reviews? Yeah. There was one movie that was insane to me. We, we don't need to talk about it for, for a long time, but I just want to bring up because it, it really yeah. is passionate to me. Um, it, so it's an A24 movie, which already, you know, sets it up pretty good because a lot of those are enjoyable movies and it's directed by Bo Burnham and he's oh, a, he's a great. funny guy. If, have you seen it? I have. I haven't seen it yet. I know that you didn't like didn't it. I, that much. Yeah, didn't I tell you that it like it would? It just my problem with it is that it has a ninety nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. That's a bold now, like that puts it in the likes of, I think, I think there's like four movies with a hundred, like The Godfather, 
I don't know if The Godfather is 100% or 99%. Seems like it would like be. Those are up there. I think Citizen Kane is 100%. The Godfather is 100%. So they put eighth grade at 99%. And That's like a huge claim to make. May, maybe an eighth grader would watch it and be like, this is like the best movie ever. Like if they relate to the character at least. But um, I feel like even like apart from that, I was going to say even eighth graders probably wouldn't say that, but, but maybe they would. But, like, apart from that, it just, I mean, it it had to have gotten its, it, it had one of those A24 vibes. I feel like all A24 movies give you, like, a certain vibe. Um, like, yeah. The Lighthouse gives you, like, a, oh, like, creepy sailor vibe, you know, Midsummer. Hereditary gives you these these weird creepy vibes so so eighth grade i feel like gives you a they all give you a surreal vibe and it's like oh like i'm i'm a student again i'm young again but um and so they did i feel like they did a good job uh in the soundtrack and with some of the uh they did weird weird things with colors like they they really oversaturated some scenes yeah, and I think I think because the main character in that movie has like anxiety, has has panic attacks, and I think it was to make, uh, uh make it like like oh you're seeing it through her eyes is more see. surreal because she has anxiety. So I feel like that would be the only part that would offer that movie redemption because otherwise it was just like very very boring. Not much happens. I mean, it just wasn't a good movie. So yeah, even in like the- if it had an eighty percent. For seventy nine percent, then I'd yeah, be like, like, "All right," but a ninety nine. So yeah, just talking yeah. about reviews. That was one of those movies nothing. that I even when the tra- even when trailers for it were coming out, I just thought I kept. I remember every time I saw a trailer for that, I went, "That does not look interesting to me." Yeah, in the least bit. And then it came out, and everyone said it is it, like they were like, "It's so good, you have to see eighth grade." And I was like. And then I watched like more trailers and I was like, I I would watch the trailer and I would go, I just don't. And and it's possible that I, I'm not an eighth grade female. So I don't, I like, I just don't think, I just think for me, yeah, I, it just does not, it does not capture my interest. Like there's just some movies that it doesn't matter how many people say it's good. I'm like, I just, maybe I'll watch it eventually, but I just don't care. Like I don't care. I don't, I don't even think I'm going to excuse it for that reason because I love, I love high school movies, college movies. I love yeah. school movies. So like Super Bad. Perks, one of Perks my favorites. Super Bad. Awesome comedy. I love that movie. Uh Curse of Being a Wallflower. I've never seen that. Awesome. Oh, you gotta watch that maybe. Is cry. that is that on Netflix? Do you know? I think it, it might be. It was last time I checked. Hopefully yeah. it, it's I think so. I think so. I feel like it Paul, is. I feel Paul like Rudd's in it. He plays a, a teacher. Um that movie's uh excellent. And then, but even, even like that had a male lead. So maybe we would connect more with that. Yeah, but then even, a, 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 what's the movie called? Like seven, not 17 again. That's, that's, uh, Zac that's, Efron. Or yeah, it was Zac Efron and Matthew Perry. But, but there's, um, I'm gonna look it up. H- high school movie. I'll find it. What, 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 it, it's a, like a recent one or an older one? It's, uh, it's pretty recent past couple of years it has um the bald dude that was woody harrelson what played the i know what you, edge of 17 edge of 17 i like that, that a lot yeah that one was good yeah i and that I had enjoyed that and i and i and i thought exactly. that, that was, and i thought that that was pr- like i totally was I, I loved her character i thought she was and I, it's been a while since i've seen it yeah so i don't know how in depth i could talk about it but but i really did enjoy, i remember enjoying that a lot and i thought woody harrelson's character was really funny like very likable too. Yeah. Yeah. He was such a likable. He was like kind of a jerk. Yeah. He was like kind of a jerk, but then he was like, you could see that like he was only doing that because he didn't really want to like get close to her. Yeah. And maybe like, again, it's been a while since I've seen it, but, but yeah, I remember really enjoying that movie. Like, yeah. And I didn't think that I would, because I feel like that's another movie that got like kind of bad reviews when it came out. So I never would have got, I feel like it got like a six out of 10 or like a, like a, a, like a really average score but i thought that it was pretty good well on imdb it has a 7.3 out of 10 but on rotten tomatoes it has a 94 percent. really oh i didn't know that that's pretty decent 
yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's much better than I thought. Pretty good. Pretty that's good. much better than I remember the reviews. Yeah, being in my head. Yeah, that that I think it's war. I don't know if it warrants. I don't know if a ninety four percent. I feel like a little bit lower. Maybe like an eight an eighty nine. Yeah. Something. It wasn't perfect. It was. I think there were flaws to it, but I did enjoy yeah. it. Have you seen? Exactly. Um, and have you seen? Uh, the kind of it's kind of a funny story. No, that's pretty good too. I again, it's been it's been a long time since I've seen that, so I can't talk about it much because I don't remember. But I just remember that that that's another movie. I, I remember that the main guy in it checks himself in. He's like a high schooler. He checks himself into a mental hospital because he thinks he's going crazy. But like Zach Galifianakis is in it and he's really good in it. Like he's a very like a, he's, he plays a much more, he's like still kind of a weird character, but he plays a much more like grounded and like serious character than usual, yeah. which he's good when he's playing a part like that. It's just that they usually don't cast him in parts like that. Um, I don't, yeah. I don't know if I've seen a movie where he's not. I, I think playing, he's, uh... He's still a, a child-minded weird. weirdo. He's still a little weird in this movie, but definitely, from what I remember, at least not to the extent of like The Hangover. Yeah. Which in The Hangover, it's funny for one movie, and then his character becomes not funny anymore in the other movies. Where I'm like, Yeah, no way that these guys would go hang out with this guy again. <laughs> There's no way that they would <laughs> ever. That if somebody drugged my drink even once, I would never ever. I would I would be like, dude. You, I'm never hanging out with you again. You, you right. drink my drink. What, like, and if they were like, "Why, why aren't you hanging out with me?" I would go, "What do you mean? Why am I not hanging out with you? you drug my drink, dude." <laughs> and then yeah. they did it for two more movies. Yeah, well, I, although in the third one, I liked they. They don't. I don't think anyone gets drugged in the third one. Um, I think they just. No, get, yeah, the third one. I. I like the third. I one. was really stupid. You did. Oh, oh I, you, I, yeah. I mean, I enjoyed it. Well, just um, the fact that it, it, they, it wasn't a hangover movie. Yeah, that is that it, is true. It definitely it was, was not. I don't like, think anyone. What, yeah, what that happened? It, was, it wasn't it about like uh, uh, Ken Jong. That's Ken Jong, right? Yeah, his character gets so annoying. Yeah, I, I cannot stand Mr. Chow. Yeah, I, isn't is, isn't the third one just where he comes back and he they? Comes, he comes back and like they he owes money to. Although I love John Goodman. John Goodman's in it, and he's really good in it as a villain. Yeah, but Mr. Chow, I think, owes him money. And, and then I, they sneak into his mansion. Yeah, and they steal the gold they, out of, like... But it was actually... That was John Goodman's other stuff that Mr. Chow didn't steal. And then they take it to Mr. Yeah, Chow. And then he's like, oh, trick. now I have all the money. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, I okay. I, my, my, my thing with that was, like, okay, if, it, if this was just a movie separate from The Hangover, then cool. But like they they weren't hungover. They didn't get drunk at the beginning and then do a, yeah. a hangover movie. But right. Then they tried to make up for it at the end because yeah. at the end they they do drink a bunch and then have a hangover and then they do like oh. I think they do like the end credits. Yeah, with, I like, think you're right. Of being hungover or something. But I watched it. I'm like, well, that's not a hangover movie. Yeah. They don't I get hungover like, and like. I in I I like um um oh what is it's Todd uh what is his the guy that did um. He did. He just did Joker. Todd. Um, Todd something. Uh, Todd. Todd. Todd Phillips. Um, Todd Phillips directed those Hangover movies. Todd Phillips. Yeah, and 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 I think it's so weird to watch Joker. Oh, he did Joker too. Yeah, he did Joker, and he also did um War Dogs, with Jonah Hill and Ma- Miles something. I yeah, I I love that other guy in uh, in War Dogs. Yeah, Miles. I, I like- I like Teller. Jonah Hill, but yeah. Let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to do this as, as quick as can as I can to be a good uh research. Yeah, Miles Teller. Miles Teller. Yeah. I yeah. Research. I I I thought War Dogs was was a good movie too. I thought that that was. Uh, I I like Todd Phillips. I like his um, I just like his the vibe that his movies have. Yeah. It's very much up like up my alley as far as like writing goes. Mm. Even in, in the Hangover movies, like I'll I like the first one, and I'll admit that the that two and three are dumb, but I, I don't know. They just have like a I, they just have like a special place in my heart because I like I like the the idea of these like bumbling idiots getting involved in crime is just it's that's like very that's very yeah. up my alley for like the stuff that I would like to, that I like to write. 
Yeah. So I think that that's why those movies kind of speak to me a little bit. They're definitely and, and not it, great. It's a great, a great schematic too of having to, the movie about them having to recall the whole day. Yeah. So I, I think, I mean, hey, that's why it's such a, such a successful movie. So absolutely, yeah. I, I do enjoy that one. one. Yeah. When when it was a new concept, when the first one came out, and it was a new concept, I think that 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 it it was probably really awesome. Um, but I think once they do it multiple times, then you're like, yeah, okay. Uh, All right, by I, the third one. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. like there's a reason think, there's not a fourth one. Yeah, I, I think that like for 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 sequels to work, you have to like you have to be building on on the story. I feel like nobody really learns anything in the Hangover movies. It would have been interesting for them to. I think if Todd Phillips had had Zach Galifianakis's character actually grow over the course of the three movies, I think his character would be much better, but he just does the same thing in every movie. So it's not interesting. It's just lazy. Like yeah. they, they, if, if the characters were changing in each movie, right. I think that would have been made those movies way more interesting. I, I still like them, but they're definitely not, not perfect, but yeah. Yeah. The first one will, will live in legend, but oh yeah, beyond that. Oh yeah, no, yeah. The second, two and three, no. no. Oh, see, I, I know that you are wearing a blazer. I was going to ask if there was a oh, dress yeah. code here. No, there isn't. But, but I've just decided that that for these, I'm going to wear the, I'm going to wear it. Um, just, yeah, I was, I was even thinking about wearing one on here, but. Uh, well, if I have you as a guest you again. Want to record the whole thing over? Yeah, actually, let's start again. Well, let's. Okay. Can you, do you remember? Do you remember everything that you said in this whole thing? <laughs> I. Uh, uh, yeah. I'll take the audio from the original and we'll lip sync oh, we along. Can dub it. Yeah. We'll Great idea. Even though it's completely, if it's completely off. Um, Dang. Yeah. I knew I should have worn one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I know we didn't talk about, uh, I know we didn't talk about the nice guys, but I, but I, I, I honestly forgot to rewatch it. Okay. So, so yeah, I just, and I, I, I forgot the plot. I was going to like pull I, up the plot and read yeah. it. I would have talked, I would have talked about it, but I tried to read through the plot before we got on here and I went, I I liked them. I liked the movie a lot when I saw it, but I just oh, it was fantastic. I didn't yeah. know enough to to really have an in depth discussion about it. So then I thought, you know what, we'll yeah. just hop on and and we'll see where 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 it takes. Right. Us. I mean, I think, I think better... all, all all that can be said is, I mean, I guess a lot can be said, but all all that's really important is Ryan Gosling is awesome. He's always good. I I well, maybe not always, but but um, but yeah, I thought in the Nice Guys especially, I thought I loved. I wish he played. I wish he played more characters like that. Yeah. He is uh, funny. Like I went on like a Ryan Gosling binge and I noticed that a lot of his characters are really quiet. Yeah. I wonder why that is. It's, I don't know. And he's I, a good I, actor. It's not like he can't he is. speak. And, and yeah, when he, when he did the comedy like that and, and the, nice, the nice guys, that was great. I thought he was, I thought that was awesome. Russell Crowe too. Yeah, they were both so good. Yeah, I thought that was a movie that I went to see and I wasn't expecting much at all. But mm -hmm. it's it's become one of my favorite movies. I, I have a nice guys sticker on my um on my laptop. Oh really? Yeah, I have I have the, the two the two guys, Russell Crowe and, and Ryan Gosling. I have them standing next to each other. Cause I really it just I don't know, something about that again, it's a movie that very much is like the type of characters that I would write. Yeah. Um, I love like kind of especially I love the dynamic between a character that's that's sort of serious and a character that's just kind of a moron i think that's that that i feel like that comedy like the the comedy that comes from a matchup like that will never get old um like yeah. i feel like that's like an age-old duo i like, don't know what about uh what about tom cruise and and uh that other dude in rain man i've never seen that Oh, what's what's the guy? Who, who's the guy who was in the Graduate? Oh, um, I feel like I, oh I need God, to I learn don't... more names. Yeah, what is that? God, I can't remember that guy's name. I know exactly uh, what you're talking about. It's like Dustin what I'm Hoffman. Dustin, Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. No, in in Rain Man, that's that's a true story where Dustin Hoffman's like the the savant. Oh yeah. Who's like, he's he's like has a form of mental retardation, but it. The, the inverse is that like the, the payoff is you know he has that but to make up for it he remembers 
everything. That's right. I've never seen that, but I've heard, like, my mom, I think, has told me a bunch of times to watch that movie that she thinks yeah. I would like it a lot. I haven't seen it. Oh, you haven't I've seen watched, it? Oh. I've watched clips of it. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard great things about that. I've never, I've just, I've never taken the time to, to check it out. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a moron who sometimes says genius things because he mm. actually is, he remembers everything. Right. And then, right. yeah, this other, other serious guy, but, uh, um, no, and, and one thing, too, the nice guys did is uh, uh, movies that really take the time in, in uh, set design. Yeah. They, they, I feel like they established every shot to, to yeah. have, have the vibe they were going for. And like, I love the 90s vibe. Yeah, I love, um, I love party scenes in movies. That's like, um, like a well-executed party scene. I don't know why I just I like the visuals of a party scene. That's one of the reasons yeah. that I wanted that I wanted to set like the ending of the beast two in yeah. a party because I just really like, I like the, I don't really, I don't love parties. I think because of uh -huh. the chaos, but there's something about seeing that it translated into a movie and like seeing like the all there's, cause there's so many people and it's such a tight space. Yeah. It's always, there's always something dramatic about a party, it, it's a party scene, especially when it's shot well. And I thought that I really liked, I really liked the the party thing in in the nice guys when they're like, I think they're right. like strippers and stuff, and they're like going through the like mansion. And I feel yeah, like they, I don't again. They did a good job, and I'll say you did a good job because I feel like a, a a party is definitely hard to or definitely easy to mess up. Oh yeah. That was um, a hard thing. Shane and I talked about that on, on the when we did our little podcast, like for the Beast thing. That that was the hard. That was even the third one's way longer than the second one. But that party scene in the second one was the hardest thing that I've ever done. That I've yeah. ever had to work on because it was they aren't actors. Yeah, well, there was a lot so. of people there that were extras that actually were actors. Oh, but I had just never. Then never I, mind. I retract my. Oh story. no, yeah, you're fine. I just I I had never had that big of a group of people in front of me to like right. direct. So I was like, I was like, uh, and like no one was listening to me because they didn't know, they didn't know why they were, they knew that we were making something, but they didn't know like why they were there or what they needed to be doing. And I was trying right. to tell them, but nobody knew who I was. So they thought I was just some like drunk guy talking like, Hey, what's And I wasn't even drunk. I was just, I was just like, they didn't know who I was. So they, they didn't, I don't know. They, they did a good job once they figured out what was actually happening, but it took a, a much louder voice. Yeah. I didn't want to yell, but then eventually I think the one dude was like, guys, listen. And then I was like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I would feel awkward because um, there's a scene that I was thinking about uh, as an opening for this, this, I guess, short film that, that I wanted to make that would, the opening scene would be a party. And for me, at least, I would think, okay, the only way to get all the party people. shot is to say, real party. hey, I'm having a party. Yeah. And then everybody comes, but then be like, yeah, but like, by the way, just like, we're going to take 10, yeah. 20 minutes and I'm just going to do this thing real quick. So everybody, and then, but then like being there, that would just be really weird to like, all right, so you guys like just kind of stand there and do this. I'm going to walk through and then you guys need to quiet down. I would just... <laughs> Yeah, I it's I, hard I to feel keep, like it's hard to keep people like it when it, when when they don't. I think one of the problems is that like, unless you're working with a a, a group of people that totally that they're one hundred percent invested in what you're doing and what you're yeah. working on, I think it's like if it's not if it was their project, they'd want everyone to listen. But it's not their project, so they're like, so yeah. they don't really, so they're like, all right, we're here to just. Party. You got to put out a casting call and say, okay, this is a movie scene, but it's also a party. Oh, yeah, exactly. So it's yeah, not like, a party. Like, you guys can come and party right. eventually, but it, but I need you to do this first, and yeah. then the party begins. Right. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Um, I guess this is probably a good, a good, uh, a good uh, thing to end on. Um, well, I'm excited, you know, now, now that the Beast is out, yes. uh, I'm really excited for you know, I spent so many, I, I mean, I've literally been working on, on Remember the Beast since, si since September, um, maybe even the end of August. And now, you know, it's now it's April. 
So, you know, my life for the, since August has been, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't do much, I didn't do much. I didn't do a a lot of work on it over. I mean, I didn't do any work on it over Christmas break because I couldn't. Um, but you know, all all these months spent on something, it's like, it's weird for it to be over, but it's like, it's also really exciting to be able to move on to the next, the next thing. Um, Yeah which part, part of my next thing that I'm working on is these little, these little podcasts, Th- those will keep me busy. But, uh, but I've got some, like, I've got some really fun ideas that, that I'm working on that I'm sure that I'm sure, you know, I'll be in touch with you about George, because I always mm-hmm. enjoy, enjoy having you involved and, in, and stuff. So and um, I enjoy taking part. I well, enjoy I being it. there. Yeah, I'm definitely, I definitely some, some fun stuff that I hope to be able to work on over the summer. Um, but we'll see. But I have this idea right now. Gotta take advantage of it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the only time we're gonna have natural light. Right. It just it depends on it, it. All depends really on what's going on with the coronavirus. Um, it, it sucks that this that this is going on. I, mean, I know that there's a lot of people going through way worse things than this, but like it sucks yeah. that this is going on as I'm graduating. Well, I mean, and you're graduating too. You know. I know. Um, it, it sucks that this is going on as we're graduating because it feels like this is like the prime the prime time to be working on things. Exactly. I'm really, I'm, I'm really worried that it's going to like, I don't know. It sucks to, it, it sucks to be graduating with a film degree while the entire film industry is shut down. <laughs> like it's like, exactly. It's definitely vaguely concerning. <laughs> so I'm like, but I, you know, I know that like, I'm just, I, well, I guess what I was going to say is I hope, I hope this summer that things have died down a little bit so I can actually get, a group of people together uh-huh. to work on stuff. You know, it, it would, it would suck to not be able to work on anything the summer after I graduate with a, a degree in film. Cause I feel like now is when I need to, it's like right, right now is like when, when we need to be working on stuff to yeah to get out there before it's too late. I mean, I don't know. I guess there's That's always, true. Time. but I have this idea right now that I, that I'm comfortable sharing on here because I, I, I won't go too far into it, but but the, it revolves around backyard wrestling, which I just find very fascinating and intriguing. I've been watching um, videos on YouTube of like some of the weirdest people I've ever seen just beating the shit out of each other in their backyards with like chairs and smashing fluorescent lights over each other. Uh, it's insane how this seriously- is, This is a real thing? Yeah, if you just go on YouTube and type in like backyard wrestling, it's like, it's like WWE in people's backyards- I was watching this video of the, this one guy came out and, and he, his, he came out and his name was the beast. And I was like, what the fuck? And this guy comes out and there, and the, there was like one dude on a trampoline and he's like, there he is the beast. And this guy's like, Ugh. and it was like a rumble match. So, or I don't even know what, I don't know much about WWE, but it was like every three minutes, a new wrestler would come out. And this other guy came out and his name was like psychotic but it was like (laughs) S-I-K-O-T-I-K. And I was like, this is insane. And at first I was like, this is so stupid. But I watched it for like 45 minutes and I was jet, when Psychotic finally got knocked out of the ring, ring, I was like, no, Psychotic. And he was like, hey, you know, I tried my best. (laughs) And I was like, I was like, what? It it was crazy. And then like, at one point, like a 12 year old kid came out. You know, all these people were like adults. And this kid come, comes out and he's like 12 and he's like, and I don't even, his name was just like, he didn't even have a wrestler name. It was just Austin. And I was like, <laughs> what, who's Austin? And they were like, Austin. And he was like, what's up? And like, they, they destroyed this kid. They didn't even care that he was 12. They were lifting what? him up and throwing him across the trampolines. What the and like, I was like, this is crazy. But anyway, it inspired, um, it inspired my next, my next short film. It's definitely going to have something to do with so you're going wrestling. for a short film. Yeah, I feel definitely. like that would make a good uh, uh, satire, satire documentary or something. That's true. That that could be an interesting direction. I haven't started writing it yet. It's well, it, I'm I'm like wor- I've got the framework for it because I'm kind of uh, I'm taking some aspects. Before we did Good Luck and Good Vibes, my original idea for uh, the short film that I wanted to do last summer was called Guitar Zeros, and it was like revolving around this this band that they play at like house shows every week. But the, the lady that 
like that runs the house show says you guys suck you guys can't keep playing here so she like tells them they can't play anymore so the lead singer of the band disbands the band um yeah and, and like uh there's a lot to it, but it, 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 it ended up not working out. Cause I didn't, I, I didn't I think love you told it. me about that. I didn't love it, but I ended up taking like big dog was a character in guitar zeros, but I ended up taking that part of guitar zeros and putting it into good luck and good vibes. So there's yeah. a lot. There's Is a lot. that the one that you were talking about where like they get disbanded and then they all go and, and live their lives and grow up uh, away from the band. And then they get like back together after they all have, these normal lives for like 10 or 20 years i don't think that i i don't think so but I, I do feel like maybe i that does sound familiar i know i had that conversation with someone maybe maybe it was with you and we were just talking about yeah, something it's, else but. it's possible that that was like a, an idea that i had at, at one point but i it definitely i don't think that was in guitar zeros but uh although maybe that now that you mention it it does sound familiar maybe that was an ending idea i had for it that they all go their separate ways or something. That sounds really familiar now that I'm thinking more about it, but, but I don't quite remember, but, but, but yeah, I took, I ended up taking a lot of aspects of guitar zeros and putting them into good luck and good vibes. But now I still have the script for guitar zeros and these characters that I kind of want to, I really want to, uh, I really want to have a female lead. Um, uh -huh. Cause that's just something that I've never, I'm not great at, like, I'm not great at writing female characters. Mm -hmm. So, like I really want to try my hand at at writing a, a female lead, right? Um, be, especially with like my weird sense of humor, I think it would be funny to to have a, a female lead. I just think it would be fun, and uh, and yeah. So that's what I, I don't want. I don't really want to talk about it too much on here because I'm still working on it. But yeah. I definitely will will be in in touch with you as I f start writing more of that. All right, George. Well, I, I'll, I'll be signing off now, but, uh, but thank you again. Okay. Thank and you. To the listeners, I'll, I'll, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.